So let's go ahead and see if we can run the applications and see if we can create a new patient and then have it save in the database. So I'm gonna open a new terminal to the right. Um, I'm actually gonna swap this and we're gonna run the application. So I'm gonna say npm run and we want to start the dev environment. So we're gonna say dev and I'm gonna press enter. And you can see that the application is running and everything looks good. So now I'm going to go over to my second workspace and let's see if we can save a new patient. So first of all, let's see if the application is responding properly. So let's go to 3000 and we should get a welcome message. Okay. So everything seems to be working fine. So now I want to send a post request. So we're going to say HTTP and then I'm going to specify the type of request. So that's going to be a post request. And then we're going to say it's going to go to 3000 and that should go to forward slash patients. So patients. And then we need to pass in the JSON information in the body of the request. And to do this with HTTP Pi, it's really pretty easy. So we just specify the key and the value. So first name equal, let's say junior, and then last name, that's gonna be my last name. And then email, I'm gonna say junior at email.com. And then the phone, so the phone can be anything. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the address. So since we're gonna have space in the address, I'm gonna put it in quotes. So here I'm gonna say one, two, three, main street. And then I'm gonna specify my diagnosis. And that's going to be, uh, let's say a light puff, for example. And I'm gonna put this in quote. And then I'm gonna specify the image URL. So I'm gonna say image underscore URL. And then let's say, let's simulate some server. So HTTPS colon double four slash uh, image server that dot com forward slash junior that png okay so let's just say that this is the server where the images are saved and then we're just saving a string which points to that specific server for that specific user or for that specific patient in this case so if i send this request this patient should be created in the database and we should be able to request that patient with a get request so let's go ahead and press enter and you can see that the patient was created. You can see we get the response and that means that it was saved in a database. You see, we get the created. So I'm gonna clear the screen and then let's see if we can send the forward slash patient. So if we send this get request now, we should get this patient back. So let's do send and you can see that we get the patient and we know that this is coming from the database because we have the ID here. As you can see, we have the ID of one. So you can see that even though I didn't have MySQL installed on my computer, I was able to spin up just a simple container with the MySQL image for the version that I want and then I specified some parameter and then we were able to have MySQL server on our computer without having to install it. And we can stop this container, we can get rid of the container, get rid of the image and it will be just gone and we didn't have to install anything on our computer. And Docker is also also really really fast like whenever you start a docker container it really starts within seconds instead of you know in the old days where you have virtual machine and then you had to start the virtual machine and it was using a lot of memory a lot of space you had to have the whole operating system so docker is really really powerful and if you guys are not very familiar with it then i would absolutely encourage you to check it out but that is just a side note as you can see here we have our application running so we know that it's working fine we can create a patient and we can fetch all the patients as well so i'm going to clear the screen and then i'm going to send another request and this time I need to change the email because if I don't change the email then we're going to get an error so I'm going to go ahead here and then let's say junior2 uh, maybe I should change the name just so that we can see something else so let's say Richard and then Smith and let's just change this as well so let's see Richard and everything else can be the same. We just need to see another request that is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this again. We get the patient back, clear the screen, send the request to get all the patients and send it. You can see that we have uh, both patients returned to us. So everything seems to be working as expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and let's see if we can fetch one patient. So we're gonna go to four slash patients and let's go to the second patient. So if I send a get request to slash patient slash two, then that should return me just the patient with the ID two. So if I send this request, you can see that we got Richard returned back to us. And I can clear again, send the patient by ID one, fetch that and you can see um, the patient with ID one is returned. So now let's go ahead and test the delete. So if you want to send a delete request, we're gonna specify the type here. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be a delete request. Also going to patients. Let's say I'm gonna delete the first patient or the patient by ID one. So if I send this request, you can see that patient deleted. And if I try to fetch all the patient again, so I'm gonna go to patients this time 
you can see that I only have one patient now, which is the patient with ID2, as you can see here. So the create patient is working, get all the patients is working, get one patient is working. So now we only have to test the update patient, which is the last thing we need to test for for our CRUD operation. So let's go ahead and test the update patient. So I'm gonna go back to the create patient. So this is the create patient. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes here. So we have to specify the ID of the patient that we want to change. So I'm gonna go back to the forward slash patient. And then here we have to do forward slash two. So we specify the patient ID. And then here, this is supposed to be a put request. So I'm gonna change this as well to be a put request. So put request, and then we're going to patients forward slash the ID of the patient. So that's the patient with ID two. So so let's say we want to change the name, for example. So I'm going to change this Richard and then I'm going to change it to Dave, for example. And let's uh, put a different email here. So let's say Richard uh, 2020 or something like that. And let's change, uh, let's say the diagnosis now is going to be just a cough. And then the image URL is going to be the same. Well, actually, I'm going to change this to the same name. So here, let's say Dave.png. So if we send this request, we should get the response back and the patient should be updated. So let's go ahead and send that. And you can see that the information is updated. We have the diagnosis is different. The first name is now Dave and everything is updated. And you can see the message here, patient updated. So we know that all of our operations are working. You can go ahead and test this further if you want. I'm just not gonna go ahead and do that because I want to move on with the course, but feel free to test everything and see what's gonna make this fail. And maybe that's gonna raise a question in your head and you can go ahead and ask me any question and you can go ahead and ask me why it's failing if you can't figure it out, but make sure you play around with this. Make sure you understand what's going on here. But at this point, all of the operations are working.